Hey everyone, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. Hey. We are super excited that you are joining us this evening. We yes. have a great uh, sit down planned for you uh, with uh, Stephanie Hackney from Hobbs Bonded Fibers. We do. We got a little. And she's got a. It's gonna be really it's awesome. a good presentation for y'all about home decor. It's really really cool. Kind of out there, um, out of the box. I wouldn't say out there, but oh. out of the box. Um, some stuff that you wouldn't really think about using with the Hobbs uh, batting products, along with their craft products line. Yeah, exactly. So she's got so many things to show you. Well, like I said, we got a little sneak peek, and we're like. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you can do that. You just, I mean, so you have to stay tuned to the end and watch it all because you got to see all of it. It's super cool. Definitely. So before we get started, we want to remind everybody about our new show that we're doing. We started it last Friday. Good morning, LEQ. Mm -hmm. It's at 830 in the morning, Central Standard Time. And it's a lot of chat and just fun and just talking to you. So make sure you mark your calendars for that or at least watch it after it's aired if you're still in bed. Wrong time zone, things like that, right? Definitely. <laughs> um, and... What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> As always, before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's going to be right down at the bottom right corner. Sure. After you click on that subscribe button, make sure you click on the little bell that shows up so you can get notified whenever we post new videos or whenever we go live here at After Hours and live with Good Morning LEQ. Yay! So I got to start adding stuff to my I know, spiel. Right? <laughs> you keep adding shows, and my spiel is going to be the whole show pretty soon. I know. <laughs> so we I see lots of people on. So uh, little Lynn had a tornado warning where she was at. Oh, yeah, you know, really? That was why they're going to Colorado like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, crazy. Anyway, so everybody, if you're there, stay safe. Um, and it's just fun to see everybody on right now. So I think without further ado, let's bring on Stephanie. Okay, sounds good. Well, let's grab her and bring her on. Hello, Stephanie. How are you? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> good to it's see you. It's always great to hang out with you two and all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that you're here and we are looking forward to your presentation um, on home decor. Tell us a little bit about how this uh, presentation came about. So um, I think part of the reason we developed some separate presentations. So, you know, obviously we have our batting what's inside matters presentation that really heavily focuses on the different batting types and fibers and how those affect the outcome of your projects. But what a lot of people don't know is about the specialty battings that we make. We also make craft products. We make home decor products. Um, and what happens a lot of times is I'll be just casually talking about, oh, and I made this pillow and yada, yada, yada. And then I'll mention a product and people will say, you sell pillow forms or you sell <laughs> furniture wrap? And so what we realized was that those products really hadn't gotten the same airtime as our main battings for quilting. But we have a lot of makers and sewers and other type of crafty folks besides just quilters that follow us. Um, mm -hmm. And we are trying to reach out to them more and more to let them know what we have. Uh, we do have a lot of uh, upholstery shops and drapery shops that have been buying us from us for many, many years. And so I decided that, hey, it's COVID time <laughs> and we need new fun things to focus on. Um, exactly. And I'm not traveling like a crazy person like you guys did for shows. <laughs> well, it gave me a chance to focus on some of our other products and develop new content. And the idea behind this presentation is that we're going to really focus on the different products that you can use for home decor. And that includes a lot of the batting. So if people have batting scraps, if you've got a bunch of laying around, if you buy rolls and you've got like a strip that goes way down and you're not sure what to do with that batting, we're going to give you some ideas. Awesome. awesome. Well, I, I love to hear that. I can't wait to see the presentation. A lot of people seem to be very excited. Um, so I guess if you want to get your PowerPoint going, I'll get it turned on and then y'all will let you get started. Yep. And then awesome. we'll, we'll save, so we'll save some questions um, and, and ask you at those towards the end, if that's okay. We'll let you do your presentation. And then if you want to pause, we'll do questions. If not, we can wait till the end and we'll have questions for you. Whenever you want to ask them, I'm happy to answer. Okay. <laughs> sounds good. All righty. It looks like there's people from all over. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. All right, Stephanie. Um, whenever you're ready, if you want to go ahead and start that PowerPoint in the full uh, full screen mode for you. Okay. There we go. All right. You see in the full screen? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Let's get going. So just for anybody who may not 
um, know the history. Um, we are actually a company that was started by the Hobbs family back in 1953. And the Hobbs family is a family of quilters. So we have been making batting since 1978, so a little more than 43 years. Um, we do make all of our own batting in the U.S., actually in Waco, Texas. And we are very proud of the fact that we make all of our own products. That's pretty unusual anymore. Um, and we source the majority of the products that we use or the materials that we use to make our uh, battings and different products in the U.S. So that's also something that's fairly unusual. But we do make a variety of batting and craft products for pretty much any kind of project. Um, and our hope today is that you get to learn a little bit about each of those. Again, if you have not um, participated in our batting What's Inside Matters lecture, um, I did a great chat with Corey and Diana, um, well, probably a year ago now that is uh, recorded you. on their YouTube channel. I think it has 20 some thousand views and there's a lot of super valuable information on there. So if you have not sat through that and you would like to have more in-depth knowledge about the battings that we make, I invite you to please go check that out. And Corey, maybe you could uh, provide a link to that video um, at some point. I think uh, that it's a fantastic, it's, the lecture, but it's a chat, right? So we're kind of going back and forth. And I think it's a, a really valuable thing uh, to participate in. And um, I'm giving Zoom lectures, you know, two to six nights a week, um, every week. And I have people who are repeating it two and three times because <laughs> it's a lot of information to take in and they want to go in and get more and more um, knowledgeable about the battings to choose. And I think that's especially important for those of you who are professional long armors um, and who are uh, looked at by your customers as the expert. So uh, learning about batting can really uh, give you a leg up on your competition and help to achieve the results that you want. Definitely. Okay, so let's talk just very briefly about fiber pros and cons, and then we're going to take a look at quilted and sewn home decor projects. So if you're looking at polyester products, and I know that generally when I poll an audience and I ask, you know, how many of you use polyester, it's usually a pretty small percentage. And when I ask how many of you would never use polyester, it's usually a pretty big percentage. And I can tell you that every single lecture I do, by the time I get to the end of the lecture and we've gone in depth into polyester, I get two or three people every time who reach out and said, I had no idea how great polyester could be and I want to give it a try. So I think it's important to keep an open mind, even if you've never used polyester, because there's some really great attributes. Number one, it's inexpensive. It's lightweight and thin but incredibly strong. It comes in a variety of lofts, so very low loft like the thermal on the left, very high loft like the cloud loft on the bottom, and there's no shrinkage. So if shrinkage is an issue, let's say that you're gonna pre-wash fabrics and you need to make sure that you have a smooth surface on whatever you're making, then using a non-shrinking batting is a great option for you. Um, so just keep that in mind. And again, if you can keep an open mind to polyester, we're going to talk about some of those and show you some projects. So here's an example. Um, there is a banner there on the right. That is actually the booth banner. It's what's hanging behind me when you can see me. Um, and it is two layers of batting. It is the polyester on the front. And you can see how much depth and poly uh, texture um, that you've got there, some dimension that you've got to the quilting. And then on the back is a layer of silk. And that silk was put in there because before the silk is washed, and I mean washed inside of a project, you're going to get a super straight, flat, squared off drape. So if you want something that drapes beautifully, the silk is a really good batting to use. So if you're doing wall hangings, this combination can be really good. Now, the only time this combination would not be good is if you're going to wash the project. This happens to be a booth banner or a wall hanging um, that is not going to get washed. So it's okay to pair these two battings. If you were going to wash this, you would want to steer clear of mixing these because the polyester does not shrink, the silk does. And with the silk, it is gonna shrink three to 5%. So when you are putting battings together, two different types of battings together, you need to pick ones that have the same shrink rate. 
And that, again, applies if the project is going to be washed. So if you're making pillows, quilts, uh, you know, throws for the couch, bedspreads, uh, holiday quilts, it might be folded up all year long. You want to always be thinking about the use case of those projects. You want to be thinking about what kind of finish you want on the surface. And again, make sure that your battings match up well in terms of the shrink rate. Then on the left there, we have a small wall hanging. And you notice quite a bit of definition in the gray where the swirls are. There's a lot of depth and definition there. But if you were to take that thermal out of the bag, it is only a 16th of an inch. It's extremely thin. And most people, when they look at that, think that they're not going to get any kind of definition to their quilting. And that's actually not true. You can get quite a bit of definition, even with really kind of loose quilting. But the more densely you quilt it, because it is polyester and has sort of a bounce to the fiber, you can get some really nice definition in your design. So again, these polyesters are very different. The Thermor is very thin. The Tuscany Poly is very lofty, very different finishes, but both will really help to show off your piecing and your stitching. Um, then we sell by the yard polyester batting. And these uh, polyester battings are sold with um, a product code that is called BY and then a series of numbers. So um, once I'm back up on screen and we're done with the presentation, I'll show a couple samples of those, but they come in different thicknesses, weights, or lofts. So everything from a quarter inch to one and a quarter inches. And the, the letters, the BY stands for by the yard. And then the numbers, it'll either be a one or two digit number in the beginning and then a two digit number at the end. So it'll either be three or four digits and it would be something like BY348. What that tells you is the three is the weight in ounces per linear yard and the 48 is how wide it is. Right. So BY38 is three ounces per linear yard and it's 48 inches wide. If you bought something like BY1696, it would be 16 ounces per linear yard, which tells you it's thicker and heavier. Right. Because it's a lot more weight. Right. And it's also 96 inches wide. So these are products that you could buy for everyday quilting. They are things you can use for a home decor, a variety of different uses. Again, these are poly battings. It is the finest veneer polyester on the market. Very, very soft and smooth. It's not that scratchy, cheap polyester. Um, and it can produce some fantastic results. In addition to that, we have a product called upholstery wrap, and it is exactly what it sounds like. This is a product that a lot of people in the furniture industry buy from us, and they use it in a variety of ways. It can also be used in drapery boxes. So if you're making like a cornice box, you're making a box to go over the top of a drapery. Very easy to build that out of inexpensive wood, and you could even do it out of foam core board, and then wrap it in this upholstery wrap. So you could change that out periodically during the year and be very inexpensive way to change up your decor. The upholstery wrap is going to be very lofty. Um, again, it's very strong and it doesn't have any shrinkage. And I'm going to show you a project that that was used in. So here are some chairs. Um, these are Ikea dining room chairs that I bought 10 years ago. They were originally covered with a white fabric cushion. Now, whoever thought white on a dining room chair was a good <laughs> idea, <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking because as you know, I mean, we don't even have little kids, but you know, we have kids who visit us um, and they got dirty very quickly. So after a lot of time, I thought, you know, this is really stupid. Why don't I just replace the covers? And my original thought was I would wash the covers. Well, they shrunk out of shape and they looked horrible. And so I just went and bought some really nice black upholstery fabric. Um, I figure black is great. That's what I wear all the time because it doesn't show the things I spill. Um, <laughs> and all I did was I took some of our Tuscany Supreme cotton. That's the square package you see there. That is our thickest cotton. It is super thick and lofty, but also very soft. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I cut a couple pieces 
just a little bit smaller than the size of that chair. And I don't know if it's obvious in the pictures, but the chair is a little bit more narrow in the in the back than it is in the front. So I cut, the, I took the board that, that was the seat cushion and I made a pattern and then I cut out some cotton and I put two layers on there. Then I cut out a piece of the upholstery wrap a little bit larger than that, large enough to go over the edges of the wood of the base of the chair. And then I wrapped that over the top of it, stretched my fabric over, got a staple gun, stapled it underneath. And let me tell you, first of all, the chairs look so much better because there's no longer any stains on the cushion. And right. if there were, you wouldn't be able to see it. And secondly, <laughs> they are much more comfortable. Um, you know, and so this was a great way to just fix up chairs that I still really liked. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're a really comfortable kind of chair. They look really nice. And this was a super easy, quick fix. I'll bet you this didn't cost me $25. And oh, wow. so, yeah. So instead of going and buying six new dining room chairs, right, for $25, $30, I've got brand new chairs. Um, so keep that in mind if you've got some pieces around the house that maybe you think, well, you know, that kind of looks worn. I think it's kind of seen better days. Maybe you want to cover it. And that could be, it could be couches. It could be even the arms of the couch. It could be arms of chairs. It could be ottomans. Um, maybe, maybe you have some kids uh, furniture in a playroom. Again, dining room chairs, any of those kinds of projects, this is a super quick and simple way to do this. And I know that Corey and Diana do carry these products. Yes, we do. Yes. So then we've also got stuffing products and we've got uh, pillow forms. And a lot of times when people are looking at stuffing, they kind of think, oh, well, you know, one stuffing is the same as the next. And I will tell you that's absolutely not true. Um, the product on the left there, the Simply Stuffing, it is a, it's a really different kind of stuffing. When you open the bag, it doesn't come out in little clumps. If you actually grab and pull it out of the bag, it comes out as kind of a roll and you can roll it out. So we use that for stuffing all sorts of things that we use to show in our booth and on display in the office. Um, but we also use it to create holiday scapes. So if any of you like to create a little Christmas village during the holidays, that is the batting that I would get. It's relatively inexpensive. You roll it out. You can stretch it any way you need to. You can even get a little bit of glitter and dust it in there if you want it to sparkle. Um, I set up a little uh, holiday scene every year and I put, I run uh, the little mini lights underneath it. I've got all these different white glittered homes um, and trees and I set up a whole little winter scape that we look at every evening and it's really nice to have. Now the poly down polyfill, which you fiber fill, which you see in the middle, that actually is now being discontinued. Um, but it is the fiber fill that we put in the pillow pals to the right. So I'm going to talk about those in just a minute. The polyester fiber fill in the middle is another type of fiber fill. The Simply Stuffing and the polyester fiber fill feel a little bit different. And I think it's important if you are making any kind of stuffed projects, including making your own pillow forms, to check both of them out and see which you prefer. I think that the polyester fiber fill has a little more density than the Simply Stuffing. The Simply Stuffing for me is, is softer, but it can be used again for a variety of things. If you need to, again, repair a piece of furniture, you can stuff this down. Like my dad had a dog who loved to eat all the way through the upholstery down to the wood on the furniture. <laughs> and so this would be a great product to kind of feed in there and then cover it with a wrap and recover that area. Um, so again, it can be used for more than things like stuffed animals and dolls and pillows. Now the pillow pals on the right, I'm gonna show you some examples of some different pillows. And when we're done with the slide presentation, I will show you a project I just made uh, that was really fun to create. And they were all made with the poly down pillow pals. Those are made with a very dense fiber fill that is and I say dense in that it keeps its shape and doesn't crush down, but it is not stiff like a foam. So these pillow pals are, we actually make them in-house. So they are stuffed and hand sewn in-house. 
Um, and there's two different versions. The one on the top has a combed uh, uh, yeah, polyester cover. And the one on the bottom that has the little pink cloud, that is actually a combed cotton cover. So either one can work. They have the same material inside of them. The one on the bottom is awesome if you're into doing any kind of art pillows. So if you like to paint, you like to do mixed media, and you want to do something really fun and crazy, you can actually paint directly on the cover of that pillow. You don't have to create a separate cover. Those pillow pals are washable, just like the stuffings once they're inside projects. So with the pillow pals, I take the covers off, I grab two of them, I throw them in the washer with a towel, I wash them on delicate and cold, and then I throw them in the dryer and they come out just like new. They do not crush down. And there are several people online who have received these who are now using them exclusively. One of those people is Maureen Cracknell. She's one of the art gallery fabric designers. And I'm going to show you one of her um, vignettes that she created with these pillow forms. And she got them. She did a comparison of them. So if you go to her Instagram account, again, it's Maureen Cracknell. Um, if you look at her Instagram account, you'll see where she did a comparison of all the different brands that she had bought. And she said, by far, these are the ones she loves to use because they do not crush down. They stay nice and fluffy. Um, and again, they're very easy to wash. So here's a few different projects. The one on the left was made by Krista Watson. She is one of the uh, designers for Benertex. She has more, to, more of a modern style. Um, she made this just using scraps of some of her fabric lines. And she used the Tuscany cotton poly, um, or I'm sorry, the Tuscany cotton wool blend. Um, and she's got that in the cover. And then the pillow form, of course, is making up the inside of the pillow. Then on the right, we've got a pillow there by Marla Varner of Penny Lane Quilts. And she used the 8020 and then put the uh, pillow form inside. So you can see these are very different style pillows. You've got a little bit different texture. I'm going to show you a couple more texture pillows where you can really see that cotton wool show off its stuff. Um, and then in the middle, this is a poof that was made by Sharon Holland of Sharon Holland Designs. She's another art gallery fabrics designer. Fantastic design. Very, very simple. I think she even has a tutorial on this. And she used that polyester fiber fill to fill this. So when you think of fiber fill, I think a lot of times people think that it's going to be sort of loose. You can see from that poof how uh, dense you can make it. So it does work really well for that. Um, another thing that we do carry that Corey and Diana could get if this is something you are interested in is we make an organic batting. So it is got certified organic. So if anybody is out there is making things with organic fabric, organic cotton, maybe you're making things for baby beds uh, or babies or kids rooms and you want every component to be organic, that is something that we do offer in both a roll and then loose in a bale. So we have a lot of people who make stuffed animals and stuffed dolls and they will buy it by the bale and then stuff everything with that. It's a beautiful soft cotton and again it is organic. Let's talk a little bit about cotton batting. So when you think about cotton, um, number one, they are natural, they're breathable, they're soft, they, we have very low lofts all the way to our supreme cotton, which is that one I used on the chairs on the bottom right. So most of our cottons are relatively thin. You can double them up to get some additional um, texture. Um, they're going to shrink three to five percent. So they're going to give you that traditional crinkled uh, look to them. But again, we've got that thicker supreme cotton. It is not as heavily needle punch. It's super soft and fluffy. Two layers of that gives you the most incredible padding and softness. Great for things like pot holders, trivets, um, anything where you want some extra cushion. Hey, Stephanie, if you'll give us a, a quick second, people are not seeing your examples. Um, let me see here. Let's see what's going on. Good information, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're not seeing the examples, so let's see what's going on here. 
It's just not catching up for some reason. It's frozen. Let's take a look. I'm going to ask some questions while I'm figuring that out. Okay, it might, hold on. It might be back. Let's see. So right now I'm on the cotton batting slide. Okay. Well, I think I've got it to, to kick back up with us. Let's, um, let's hold on just a quick second and see if it's going to populate right. Uh, if you'll go back to the, the pillows. Um, oh, yeah, there it yeah, goes. Will you go back to the Yeah, and just briefly, real quick, touch on those, just so they can see the examples. Just say that was that, that was that. But now you're back. Yeah, that's okay. where I got frozen. Was Sorry. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Thank you for letting us know. Um, so the pillow on the left was made with a cotton wool batting. And I'm going to show you another pillow where you can see the texture a little bit better than that. Um, but that is going to have a lot of texture. Now, if you're primarily piecing, you won't see as much texture. But if you do a lot of stitching, you are going to see a lot of dimension there. The pillow on the right is using the 80-20. You still see the texture in the stitch lines, especially in that little close-up picture. Um, but not as much as with the cotton wool. And that's because having that little bit of wool in there will actually give you more loft and puff to your design. And then in the middle, we've got the poof that Sharon Holland made that, that is filled with the polyester fiber fill. And again, you could use this polyester fiber fill. You could even use batting scraps. So if you have a whole ton of batting scraps, especially things like wool or polyester, you could fill the poof with that as well or you could use the organic cotton. And again, that is a product um, that is available in rolls and in loose bales. Okay, still still no pillows. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see here, still no pillows. Give me just a- Gotta a, love a, technology. Gotta love it, it's always something. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys, everybody that's watching. We can see it on our side, so we don't know why you can't see it. So we're trying to figure it out for you. Give me just a second. I'm going to try something else real quick. See if I can grab it. Okay. All right, y'all, let me know if you can see that. We'll see if it's going to take it back or if it's going to give us an issue still. So we rehearse this 75 times I and it know. works just fine. But then when we get down to the business, it doesn't run. Right, okay. So I think, I think they can see the the screen now just on the pillow examples. I don't think we have to go um, over it again. But we don't have to go over it again. But those are those pillow examples that she was talking about just for y'all to have a, a visual of what they are. So sorry about that, um, that it wasn't going along with, with her talk, but um, still beautiful examples uh, left, middle and right there. Um, so you can still see them all. And it looks like everyone's actually seeing them now, finally. All right, okay, so, so I'll, I'll go forward and just interrupt if, if we lose the screen again. Okay, sounds good. So we talked a little bit about the cotton again. We've got lots of different types of cotton. The ones on the left are natural and bleached, and they are 100% cotton. The one on the upper right is 100% cotton with a scrim layer. The scrim layer is just like a stabilizer or an interfacing. It is a separate, very thin, very soft and incredibly strong layer that we needle punch into the cotton. And that creates a web on the cotton so that the cotton can't stretch out of shape. Because if any of you have ever pulled on a roll of cotton, it's very easy to get it pulled out of shape. So having that scrim layer creates a web or a net over the cotton and you really can't feel it. If I hand somebody a sample of that, that batting, generally they can't tell me which side the scrim is on. That's how soft and thin it is, but again, incredibly strong. So why would you use one versus the other? Well, the cottons on the left need to be stitched every four inches. The one with the scrim, you can go up to eight inches. So if you're making wall hangings or bedspreads or things for your home, um, and especially if you're going to be making things that are going to get a lot of use and maybe abuse, having that scrim layer in there is great. 
Number one, because you have eight inches to stitch, you have a lot more design options. If you were making a modern quilt or a quilt where you wanted a lot of open space, or maybe a t-shirt quilt that you were gonna hang up or put over a bed, and you wanted to be able to stitch further apart, the natural cotton with scrim is a great choice for that. And then again, at the bottom, we've got that Tuscany Supreme cotton, which is a super thick lofty cotton. Two layers of that put together will give you the most incredible old style vintage granny quilt. And every time I hand somebody a sample of that, we have a, a small uh, quilt sample made with two layers everybody puts it over their shoulder and cuddles with it. So it's a really, really nice batting for thicker kinds of projects. But again, this is the batting that I used on the cushions on those chairs. So it's a fantastic way to add a little bit of extra padding. Let's take a look at some samples. So in the middle there, let's go ahead and start with the one in the middle. This is a quilt that was done by Kelly Klein Quilting. She specializes in vintage fabrics and linens. This was the sample she made when we first developed this product. Before we put this product in the market, I sent it out to a bunch of designers and asked them to test it and tell me what they thought of it. This is what Kelly created with it. That is one layer of that batting densely stitched and look at that incredible texture. So if you're really into texture and wanting to make certain things pop out, that can be a fantastic batting to do that with. You could even double it up in the areas where you have the circles or maybe you have certain blocks or applique pieces. And again, a great way to get, to get some really nice texture and dimension in a project. On the left there, we've got the natural heirloom batting and it is used for a table runner. I will tell you that for anything to be used on a table, like a dining room table where you're gonna have food and drink, we always recommend using a low loft batting. So there's a beautiful uh, runner that was made by Sharon Holland. Again, she's an art gallery fabrics designer. This is one of her projects. And she used the natural 100% cotton, a very low loft, thin, soft cotton. You could also use something like Thermor, which is the very low loft polyester. You could use the 8020 which is 80% cotton, 20% polyester. You could even use the silk. Now, the only time I tell people not to use the silk on something for the table would be in something like placemats or coasters where you know you're gonna get spills on them and you're gonna potentially have a lot of moisture going into them because the silk requires cold water washing. And if you get spaghetti sauce spilled on a placemat, you may they need to wash that in warm water to get the stain out and silk may not be the best choice for that. Then on the right, there is a pillow form that was made with the cotton wool. So Maureen Cracknell, again, she's the one I mentioned earlier. Um, she makes everything with our cotton wool batting. That's her favorite batting. She even makes little pouches with it. And it's got tremendous definition and texture. And then again, she's put those pillow forms in the inside of that. So just some examples of different decor, different colors. And again, this is a super easy way to update your decor, right? Change out your table runners, change out your pillow covers. With your table runners, as we're going into the holiday season, consider maybe making them double-sided. So right now I'm going to be working on one for Halloween and Thanksgiving. It'll be Halloween on one side, Thanksgiving on the other. I only have to make one runner. I can get really neat definition on both sides. What I plan to do is to quilt them independently and then put them together. So one side will be Halloween with one type of batting, one type of quilting. The other side will be Thanksgiving and it will be different uh, pattern, different colors, different quilting. And then I will put those two together. And now I only have to store one runner and it works for two different purposes. So just trying to give you some ideas, ways to maybe think a little bit differently about home decor. And again, to remind you for very little money and a way to use up your batting scraps, uh, batting you may have on hand or to pick up some new batting to use up your fabric st stash, these are quick ways to update your decor. 
So we talked a little bit about the organic batting. I just wanted to show you what that looks like. That's a close up on the right side. And the only thing I will tell you about that is you'll notice little specks in there. It is important that you not use this product with white fabrics. And that's because those little specks are naturally occurring in the cotton. They cannot be cleaned out because then you lose the GOT certification and it's no longer organic batting. So we don't recommend that this product be used with white fabrics, but with light fabrics, medium, dark, any other kind of fabrics, no problem. And it is incredibly soft. So if you were going to be making something like this, if you were going to be making um, a, a crib set, or maybe you're going to make things for babies, um, if any of you are selling on Etsy or maybe selling through Instagram, and or maybe you've got a little shop, or maybe you're a long armor and you're helping to create things for customers. If you're making everything with organic fabric and thread, you may want to consider using an organic batting as well. And then let's pop into 8020. So we have 8020s in the heirloom line, which are all 80% cotton, 20% polyester. And then on the bottom, we have one in the Tuscany line, which is 80% cotton and 20% wool. The wool is going to give you a little more loft, again, a little more definition like you saw in those pillows. Um, and we've got all these different varieties. So from left to right on the heirloom 8020, there's a natural there's a bleach that's ideal for white and light fabrics. There's a black that's ideal for dark or black fabrics, even bright jewel tones and no lint. So if you're making big quilts or wall hangings or anything and you, you're doing it with all dark colors and you're used to having to get the lint brush out to get all that light colored lint off, you will not have to do that with the black batting. And then we have a fusible version. And I'm going to have Corey mention quickly about the video that he just did that seems to be gaining a lot of popularity. So we have a fusible 8020 batting and we also have batting strips. So Corey, do you want to just mention um, which video that is in case people want to learn how to use that? Uh, definitely. Yeah. So we were looking a little bit more into how... Um, we do free motion quilting on a sit down machine. Yeah. And the best way to do that when you're putting that quilt sandwich together is using the Hobbs fusible batting because mm -hmm. uh, it just works wonders putting that uh, quilt sandwich together and then you can go sit down at your domestic machine. So the video is called easy, I did it on the edge to edge, so yeah. easy edge to edge uh, free motion quilting on our YouTube channel, go check it out. Uh, two or three videos ago, some really good information on how to use that Hobbs fusible and it just turns out a really good product for you. Yeah, and yeah. so and while we have you on the screen, we did have a question earlier just about some tips on Fusible. So while mm -hmm. we're talking about Fusible, what are some good tips on that Hobbs recommends when you're using the Fusible, like ironing it down and making sure it sticks okay? Okay, so here are the keys to success with that product. It is a non-toxic, water-soluble fusing medium. It is sprayed on both sides of the batting. So if you're used to spray basting to make your quilt sandwich, you know that you have overspray, Generally, you're going to have fumes and you sometimes get gunking up of your needle. You will not have that problem with the 8020 fusible. We've already done that messy, smelly work for you. Again, it is a non toxic, water soluble fusing medium. Once you create your project and you wash it, the fusing medium washes out. So it is a temporary adhesive. Now, if you don't wash, um, your project. Let's say you're making a jelly roll rug and you don't wash it, or you're making a little pop-up bin or a basket or something with it. You will not be probably washing those items, at least not very often. And so you're going to have a little more stiffness and structure to those. And when we're done with the presentation, I can show an example of a little basket that was made with that. Um, but the keys for success, number one, you need to have a very hot iron. You want to use an iron that isn't going to be auto shutting off because you're going to be pressing in each area and you don't want your iron going from hot to off, hot to off, hot to off. So you want to use an iron. Um, if any of you have the little mini Aliso iron, that thing gets hot as heck and it's wonderful to use for <laughs> this kind of product. Um, it is the, the iron that I use when I demo this product and I absolutely love it because it gets super hot even on the a two setting. You don't even have to take it up to three. The key thing is hot iron, dry iron. Do not use steam because if you get that 
if you get the fabric wet and it soaks into the batting, then the batting is not going to stick. The next thing is you need to hold it in place for at least three to five seconds in each spot. If you've never used the product before, what we recommend is that you lay down your backing fabric, your batting, and your top fabric. You're going to press from the top in a corner for three to five seconds. Lift your iron and let that area completely cool. Now tug on the fabric on the top and make sure it's adhered. If it's not fully adhered, you may need a little more time than that. It depends on how hot your iron gets. But I find with the Aliso iron, three to five seconds, no problem. One of the things that I see a lot when people do demos of the product, even the ones who really love it, you see them moving the iron around. This is not ironing, it's pressing. So it's really important for success that you hold the iron in place and not move it around. Hot, dry iron, hold it in place. Now, one thing to consider is you can use this for things like quilt as you go. You can also use it um, if you are going to be, again, making like jelly roll rugs or bags or baskets that are made with those tubes. And in that case, I recommend those fusible batting strips. It's the same exact batting cut into strips that are two and a quarter inches wide and they're 25 yards long. And a lot of people will ask me, well, what's the difference between your strips and other strips? Number one, it's made with 80-20, which has a little bit of stretch, will not stretch out of shape and will not um, also pull apart. If you're using a 100% cotton strip and you pull on it, especially as you're making something like a jelly roll rug, you may find that you get a little bit of stretching and distortion and that can affect the outcome of your rug. So having that 80-20 with that a little bit of give in there actually is a really nice thing. And again, it being fusible, you fuse it to your fabric, then create your tubes that you are then going to stitch together. Um, if you are only going to fuse one side, let's say that you wanted to use this to make applique shapes. You're going to make some fall leaves to put on a fall table runner. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put a layer of parchment paper, not wax paper, but parchment paper underneath, then lay the batting on top and then put your fabric on top of that. Go that same process of pressing. And now you still have the fusible surface on the bottom and it's not going to stick to your ironing surface. And now you can feed it like through an AccuQuilt machine. You can use a template. You can freehand cut shapes out. And you can put them on, audition them where you want them, fuse them in place, and then do your stitching. So it's great for taking a project over to the TV while you're watching TV shows or movies. Um, it's great for traveling with a project and it holds together. I have a sample that I bring out during every lecture and it has been held together just by that fusible batting for more than nine months. And it gets handled a lot every single week. It will stay together as long as it's in a climate controlled environment, it'll stay together just fine. Um, so if anybody has any challenges with the fusible batting, you're welcome to reach out to me. I'm happy to walk you through how to use it. Um, once in a while, we'll get somebody who has a problem getting it to stick. And if that's the, your case, please reach out to me and let me try to help you with that. If we find that it's not sticking, we can also replace that for you. Um, once in a while, we will get one that is not as sticky as the others. And that's just the nature of making batting, right? It's part art and part science. We're not perfect. Once in a while, something gets through and it may not be perfect. And in that case, we just replace it. We want you to be happy. And especially with a product like the Fusible, we know it's a fantastic product. We've got a lot of reviewers for it who are just thrilled with it and who love using it. Corey has a video where he showed using it and it is a real game changer. But if you're having trouble with it, please reach out to me and let me help you because I want to make sure you have success like we've had success with it. Perfect. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. That was great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so All right. here's, here's a few examples. These are different table uh, scape or table toppers placemats that were made. Um, all of these were made by the Island Batik Fabric Ambassadors. We provide their batting. We actually sponsor their ambassador team. And they are huge fans of our batting. They reached out because their people wanted to use our batting. So we provide the batting and we've got some different projects here. So on the very left, we've got a table uh, topper and some matching placemats. And then next to those, we've got a Bargello uh, design placemat. On the very right, 
we've got some kind of traditional block placemats that were uh, where some scraps were used up. And then in the middle there, we've got a really unique design for a placemat made by Sally Mankey, fiber, fiber artist. And she used these wonderful shapes that she had, right? So if, if any of you are into English paper piecing like I am, maybe you have a lot of extra pieces. Maybe you've put a lot of them together and you've decided, you know what, that huge quilt I thought I was going to make with 10,000 of these hexes, probably never going to happen. This is a great way to use them, right? You can use them in household projects. You can use them on pillow covers. You can make little mug rugs with them, coasters, placemats, table toppers, etc. So if you've got things like that in your stash and you've put a lot of time into them and you really want to get them into something and show them off, this might be a way to do that. On the top there, you'll notice this is mostly used with 80-20. So we've got the natural at the top. We've got the black underneath the, the flower-shaped placemat. And then the bleach was used for the ones on the right. And again, can be used with black or dark or jewel tone fabrics and the white for white fabrics. So anytime that you have really white fabric, using a bleach batting is nice because it keeps that white really bright white and it'll keep your lighter colors true to color. Some more examples, and again, here's a jelly roll rug on the right that was made with the fusible batting strips and then some matching placemats next to that. Very, very simple project, um, and she was nice enough to send these to me so I could do some photos. Um, and, you know, the fusible for making these kinds of projects is an absolute game changer. I sent it out to a few different designers, one of whom made a big jelly roll rug. He has a huge YouTube channel. And I said, look, I want your honest feedback when we, when we launch these strips. And he said it was the difference between a jelly roll rug taking him four hours and an hour and a half. So if you are struggling with a jelly roll rug, if you really want to cut down the time of making that and have it be a less frustrating experience, that can be a really good product to try. Three different table runners here. Again, bleach, the natural, and the black 8020. Three different versions of table runners uh, for Valentine's, uh, the fall, or Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Christmas just different ideas, ways that you can use up your scraps and, and create something really nice for your home. And again, the 80-20s are ideal for anything that is going to be on your table where you're going to have food and drink around the area because that batting can actually, once inside a project, can be washed in warm water and dried. So this project on the left is the project I was talking about. It's a pop-up bin. It actually has straps that I just folded in. And it is made in the same way that you would make a jelly roll rug. You can make fabric bowls in the same way. And I'll have an example of one of those coming up. But really fun project. Now, you notice how stiff that is, right? It holds up very structured. It is because it has not been washed, right? And that's the kind of project that is probably not going to get washed. Um, but it will hold up a lot of structure. So if you are used to making bags or rugs or things where you normally would put foam in them or a really strong um, interfacing or maybe some kind of structured stabilizer, you do not need to do that if you use the fusible batting. You will get plenty of structure when you're making tubed projects because the tubes in that batting are going to be very dense when you put them together. So that's just a, a really great option, saves you some money, and the batting will not break down over time. On the right there, we've got a really nice pillow that was made by Brett. He goes by Natural Born Quilter. He's a Canadian quilter, and he loves the recipe of the Hobbs Heirloom 8020 and the uh, Tuscany cotton wool layered on top of each other, the wool being the top layer. All of his quilts are quilted with that pairing, but he also made a pillow here. And again, this has got our pillow form and it's just a way to show a little bit different way to use some fabrics and a way that he was showing off his new fabric line. This is a really super cute cow. Um, the second I saw this on Instagram, I reached out to her and said, I have to have that quilt. That quilt actually hangs in my office at the plant and makes me smile every time I walk in and look at him. And he sits directly across from my desk. And even on a bad day, 
I look up at him and how can you not smile? Now, what I want to point out in here is that a lot of people, when they look at the 8020, because it is a low loft product, they think you're not going to get a lot of definition. You can see here, you can get a tremendous amount of definition, even with one layer. And again, that's because of that polyester that is in there. So if you're making wall hangings and any kind of thing you want to hang on the wall, even maybe like a pocket organizer, or maybe you're making a little organizer that goes onto your sewing station, maybe you're making a cover for your sewing machine, these can be really nice battings to use. And again, there's four varieties of those. Then we've got wool and silk battings. And the wool and silk are what we refer to as our premium battings. That doesn't mean the other ones aren't premium. It just means that these are at the higher end of the pricing scale. They are phenomenal in terms of hand quilting. If you're doing any kind of hand work, these are the two battings that we always recommend. They are going to be antimicrobial and natural. They breathe. This wool on the left is a super washed wool, so it's super, super soft, and it can be great inside things. We have people who make pillows who will actually wrap the pillow in a layer of wool and then use the wool also in the cover, and you get tremendous loft and definition to your design. The silk on the right can be used for a variety of things, including wall quilts and art quilts can be used for things for a table, but I would reserve it probably for a, uh, like a sideboard table, uh, table runner, something that's not going to have a lot of food and drink about around it. These two products, once inside a project can be washed, but it does need to be in cold water on a delicate cycle. So they have a little bit different care requirements. Tuscany cotton wool, the wool, the silk, and the Tuscany Supreme should all be washed only once inside of a project and on cold water in a delicate cycle. These two are beautiful for drapes. So if you're making bedspreads, if you're making throws, they are wonderful for that. I'm going to show you some projects made with them. So this is a dream big panel. Um, Corey and I have <laughs> I had many conversations over dream big panels. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> this one was made with wool on the top and silk on the back. And on the right there, you can see the close-ups of the definition that you get with wool. That is one layer of wool on the top with a layer of silk underneath. The reason that we paired those two together, number one, this is a, a traveling quilt that we need to carry with us. And it needed to be really lightweight because a lot of our quilts are very heavy. And so this is one that you could fold up, throw in a little shoulder tote, carry all day, and you'd never get tired because it weighs virtually nothing. But it has a beautiful hang and drape, and partly that is due to the silk. The silk has a lot of structure um, until you wash it, and then it is going to drape beautifully. It also is wonderful for anything that is going to be very densely quilted that you don't want to get it really stiff. Now, what you'll notice on the Dream Big panel on the left is that we've got in the corners, we don't have it bound on the front. It's bound to the back and it is thread painted in all corners. And that thread painting actually would normally be super stiff. Once you wash the quilt, it really relaxes. So if you're making things like bedspreads and you want to really heavily stitch the edges and you want it to drape nicely over the bed and not stick out in the corners, silk is a really good choice for that. We have another version of that. This is a uh, red, the red colors. And what I want you to notice is on the right hand side, those are the pictures where the silk batting is. The one on the top is where the, the variegated thread silk painting or thread painting is. And on the bottom, that is the back of the quilt. That is the silk. So even though the silk is relatively flat and low loft, what you'll notice there is that you still get a lot of definition, even with a batik fabric, which a lot of times kind of obscures your stitching. So you can get some really nice textures. We're going to just quickly pop through some holiday projects, but I thought maybe we could take a break. And if Corey or Diana, if you have any questions that you want to pose, um, so we can take a quick break. Uh, yeah, we just had a qu one a quick question earlier was about wool batting. And is um, like double layering the wool batting, will that make it warmer for you? 
it will um anytime that you're adding two battings you're going to increase the warmth of it um one thing to keep in mind is that the wool while it will keep you warm it is what we generally use in all of our quilts here in Texas where it's hot most of the year because it breathes. So it, it and it's lightweight, right? So it's going to be a cuddly quilt. It's going to provide some warmth, but it is going to be cool enough to use year round. The same with the silk. So those two battings are our favorites for quilts that we want to use year round, especially quilts we're going to put like on a bed or on a throw, maybe a throw for the couch that we're going to be cuddling up under. Um, and so, you know, the wool will give you tremendous definition if you double up the layers. Now, I will tell you that there is some information going around on Facebook in some different groups where a lot of people who are doing hand quilting or art quilts are taking the wool and separating it. And they're using it because that thins it out, but they still get the loft in the texture. If you're making an art quilt, something you're just going to hang on the wall and and you're, you're going to use it as, as a display piece, that is okay to do. But if you are going to be putting it in a quilt that will be washed, please do not split the battings because that actually destroys the integrity of the batting because of the way the batting is manufactured. So I just want to bring that up because I, I get kind of uh, sidetracked with that quite often. People will reach out and they'll say, oh, you know when I split the batting and then I have to go through the whole spiel about why that's not a good idea. <laughs> So again, if you're doing it for an art quilt, right? Something you're going to hang on the wall or you're making little art fabric postcards or something, right? It's probably not going to matter. But if you're going to wash something, do not split that batting because you are ruining the integrity of it and that batting could start to migrate in your quilt. So we've got some holiday projects here. These are just different ones that were made by different people. The, the one on the left in the middle, um, these are made by the Island Boutique Ambassadors. And you can see the different battings that we recommend for those. Again, great fun way to, to dress up your home for the holidays. I wanted to point out on the right, those are just two of the probably hundreds of panels that came up when I went to Google and did a search, Halloween fabric panel. There were so many different choices from super spooky, scary, to super cute, to vintage. And it is a very quick way to create something for your home. And even if you have a standard sewing machine and no walking foot, you could easily quilt with these. So these panels are really fun. You can also cut them apart and make a banner to hang up, up on your um, fireplace mantle. You could use them for a kid's birthday party. If you have a kid that has maybe a Halloween party, you can make treat bags with them. So many ideas. And I know that Corey and Diana carry some panels and I know Corey's got some new ones coming in. Um, so please check out the panels that they offer and, and look at panels. I mean, I mean, I know a lot of people look at that as cheating <laughs> by having a panel, but I'm telling you, I ordered six different ones for the holidays and I'm going to make all sorts of projects with them. I'll share them on our Instagram feed at Hobbs Batting. Um, and I cannot wait to play with them because I just think that it's a really fun way to make quick projects. You don't have to spend a lot of money on them. Um, you can use them one year, donate them, give them away and have something new next year. If you're like me who always wants something new. Here's a few more projects. Um, on the left, we have a little pillow there, a skeleton on the front, some cute uh, printed fabric on the back. And then on the right, we have a ghost table runner. Up in the middle there is a no sew pumpkin. I'm gonna hold this up and Corey, tell me if you can see this. Are you able to see this little pumpkin? I am. Okay, so this is a $1 foam pumpkin. That is what is inside that pumpkin. And all I did was core out the middle. It's actually hollow in the middle. I filled it with a bunch of stuffing. And then I took some uh, stretchy kind of corduroy fabric. And I just gathered it up, tucked it into the center. Then I took some thermor batting and I wrapped it in a little bit of that fabric and stuffed it in to kind of plug the hole. Then I took a little more thermo batting and shaped it like a stem, wrapped the fabric around it, cut some uh, burlap from some burlap ribbon, wrapped that around it and just used hot glue to put it together. And then oh I, <laughs> I hot glued that stem into the middle of the pumpkin. 
There is no sewing. That thing took me 10 minutes to make. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm yes. going to the Dollar Tree. I know, it's adorable. <laughs> I was just looking at it too. I'm like, go back to the picture. I need to look closer. That's cool. Yeah, and it, I, I'll tell you what, it is was so fun to make. And I bought like five different versions of that fabric, all different like fall colors. I'm going to be, I'm, we're going to have 80 pumpkins in this house. It so <laughs> and it was so easy. And I, you know, I brought it out to my husband who, you know, is used to me showing him whatever I made. And he said, that is so cool. And let me tell you, if he says that's super cool, it's super cool. <laughs> so, um, super easy to make. And again, you wouldn't have to use that pumpkin. You could use any pumpkin you have. Another option is you can use a toilet paper roll. So if you want to make a little pumpkin that you're going to have in your bathroom and you can use it again year after year, or maybe you want to make it and just for a one-time use, you could make it, wrap it around a toilet paper roll, do the same thing, use that as the, as the base. You could use it. And then when you're done, you just pull the fabric off, use the toilet paper. Another option would be to just stuff it. So you could make, um, Corey has, uh, you guys did a balloon, um, it, it's like a balloon uh, template. Yeah, fabric balloon balls, yeah. Right, so you could actually use those templates to cut out pieces, sew them together, stuff them, and make a pumpkin out of that. Oh my gosh, oh, I didn't yeah, even think could. about that, wow, yeah. You sure could. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so right after you did that balloon pumpkin or that balloon thing, I bought those templates from you and I've got them here and I cannot wait to make some pumpkins with them. That's awesome. That awesome. Yeah. So when, when I get them done, I'll post them to Instagram and tag you guys so you can share them. But again, yes, this is a super quick no sew project, a great way to use up your fabric, maybe your ribbon stash. And again, you can use stuffing, you can use a plastic pumpkin, a foam pumpkin, whatever you've got. And you could even take now that this pumpkin, I actually wrapped thermal around it first before I put the fabric on to give it a little more puff, but you don't have to do that. And again, you could do that with any batting that you have, and it doesn't take very much. So again, on the right, we've got a little um, uh, picture of that pumpkin again with a different background and I am going to be making a whole bunch of those and sharing them. I wanted to show this little seating area on the left. So when I was talking about the fact that Maureen fell in love with our pillow forms, these are all our pillow forms. I sent her a case of like every size and like within days she had this whole vignette of all these pillows made. Great way to use up your fabric stash. Great way to dress up a little area in your home. Think about the holidays. If you're going to be having company and you need a little private space for people to hang out in, this could be a really great way to do that. And again, you can make the covers and then put them away for the season and bring something else out. I also wanted to point out that although these are not fall motif, these colors lend themselves well to being used in the fall right? So keep in mind that you may have a bunch of fabrics in your stash that are the maybe the kind of standard colors for Halloween or fall or Christmas, or maybe even winter, maybe blues and whites that don't have to necessarily have those holiday motifs on them, but they would be super fun to create a little area like this. We've got a whole bunch of different um, uh, stockings that have been made um, with all different types of battings. I just wanted to show you some different examples. Again, on the left, you've got some that are really more kind of traditional Christmas look. In the middle, you've got some clamshell pieces. Those might have been left over from another project. On the right, you've got some piece trees. Um, and then we've got some different types of things that you can make. So pot holder on the left, uh, some hoop ornaments in the middle, and then some coasters on the right. These were all scrap projects. One thing to keep in mind is that the uh, Thermor, the Tuscany Poly, the wool, and the silk 
are wonderful for quilting in the hoop, either by hand or with a machine. So if you're doing machine quilting in the hoop, or you're going to be doing embroidery, or maybe you're doing cross stitching, and you want some texture and dimension, you can use one of those four battings that we recommend for hand quilting inside your hoop. I tend to use silk. I like the way the silk gives some structure. It's very easy to pass the needle through, like hand quilting through a soft stick of butter. So just a few different ways, again, to use up scraps. If you're going to be making holiday quilts, you're going to be generating some scraps with those holiday fabrics. This is a great way to use them up. Here's, again, some examples of some Jelly Roll rugs, a reminder of the tips uh, that are uh, for that fusible batting. Let me move this little thing here in case that's blocking your view. Um, and then on the left, we've got a fabric basket. One little tip I'll give. <coughs> excuse me, if you're going to be making a jelly roll rug, you're going to have a little tail, right? So you've got the whole jelly roll rug laid out on the um, surface of your sewing machine, and then you're going to have this tail that you're feeding in. If you pull on that tail, you are actually going to cause the rug to curve, right? Now, if you're making a basket like the one on the left, like a rope basket or fabric, basket, you actually want to pull on that and you want to kind of scooch the fabric up to get it to curve. But if you're making a jelly roll rug, that is not a good outcome. You want that thing to lay really flat. So one little tip I will give is when you're making the jelly roll rug, do not pull on that tail. Just guide it, but don't put any pressure on it and that'll keep your rug more flat. A few more ideas. We've got a couple table toppers, one on the left there, one on the right, and then we've got a, um, some little placemats uh, in the center there. Super cute ideas. Again, super scrap friendly. So if you've got a lot of fabric and batting scraps to use up, this is a great way to do that. Um, but again, um, Linda's Electric carries all of the battings that we make, and they carry all of the ones that we're recommending here. We've got another example of a table runner, um, three different styles, all a little bit different, very holiday oriented, and you can see the different battings that we recommend. I do want to point out that on that one on the left, the Christmas flower table runner, you'll notice that one of the battings we recommend is the natural cotton with or without the scrim. Again, if the design requires tight stitching, you can use any batting, but maybe your design, um, you don't want it stitched so tightly together. Then using something like the scrim, which allows you to go eight inches apart, might be a really good option for you. Here's some beautiful little wall hangings that people created. Look at the amount of definition and texture in these. And you'll notice the different battings that we're recommending here. They are all very high loft battings. So polyester, cotton wool, and wool. Those are going to give you that really great dimension, make your piecing and your stitching really, really pop. That little tree on the right is one of my favorite projects I've seen because I love how those things curve. So if you're good at making curved pieces, that might be a really fun project to take on. We've got some tree skirts here, different designs. The one in the middle, she had a lot of that fabric. And so there's there's two different versions of the tree skirt, that round one and then that um, uh, more dimensional shaped one up at the top. Um, lots of different ways that you can make a tree skirt, including just cutting wonky shapes and sewing them together. So great way to use up your pro products. Um, and I would, on all of these, um, just consider whether or not you want it to be really flat or really puffy right? So if you want a lot of puff to your tree skirt, then I would recommend using a high loft batting. If you want it to be more flat because you're going to be putting maybe a nativity scene or something on it, then you might want to go with a more low loft batting. We've got some different here. Um, and again, the one on the left may or may not be Christmas fabrics, right? But it still lends itself well to being used around the holidays. The one on the right is more of a traditional fall pattern in terms of the leaves, but she's used colors that are really more indicative of winter or the holidays. So lots of ways to be thinking about how you might dress up your home. 
And then we've got one here again, the tumbler blocks is kind of a standard block and it really could be Christmas or maybe not Christmas. But when you look at the close up, the stitching is a poinsettia. So it makes it look much more Christmas and then it maybe has dual purpose. The one on the right, these are scraps from the previous page where we had those um, tree skirts. So she had a bunch of extra scraps, she needed a baby quilt, and she put those together in a baby quilt. If you're making anything for children, the products that we generally recommend are Poly Down, Tuscany Poly, or the Heirloom 8020. All of those can hold up to warm water washing and drying. And again, once they're inside a project, please do not pre-wash any batting, meaning washing the batting on its own because that destroys the integrity of the way the batting is made. So here's just a few more ideas, different ways and use up your batting scraps and your fabric scraps. Um, one thing I want to point out is that you can use batting for Swiffer pads. So if you're used to buying Swiffer pad refills what? for your Swiffer, you can actually take things like, you don't want to use 100% cotton batting. You're going to want to use a batting that's got a blend um, because the cotton will, if you just use 100% cotton, it may lint quite a bit. Um, but you could use like the one with the scrim, put the scrim down. You could use uh, the 8020s. And it makes a really nice pad. And if you just got scraps, it's a lot less expensive. I just went and bought Swiffer pads and they were like $11 a box. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be a great, a great money saver. Um, so I just want to put my information up there. Of course, Corey and Diana are great resources. They've been a wonderful customer and partner of ours for many, many years. They know a lot about batting and Corey quilts all the time and he's always showing me new projects he made. So I know that they can provide information. But if you ever have any questions about our products, you need information, um, you're looking for uh, tips on how to use something, you can always reach out to us. That is my cell number at the bottom. You are welcome to call me anytime. I am in the central time zone. So please keep that in mind <laughs> if you're going to be calling me. I once in a while get calls at four o'clock in the morning from somebody overseas who forgot about the time difference. Um, but I'm always happy to help somebody uh, with batting, picking out batting, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the sharing so that I can see all of you again. Okay. And then I think I'm going to, I'm going to put your information up there one more time. I don't think it made it onto the screen, but I, I took a screenshot of it. So I'm going to put that up there real quick. Um, so we can get that seen. There. Yeah. And I just, I just noticed a question there from um, Mar uh, Marie Johnson. <laughs> My favorite batting I learned about from Jamie Wallen is poly down. Actually, I just mentioned the poly down. Um, the Tuscany Poly and the Poly Down are virtually the same product. They are in two different product lines. The Poly Down's in the Heirloom line, the Tuscany Poly's in the Tuscany line. Very, very similar product. Um, and I did mention the Poly Down when I talked about kids quilts, but it is another batting that will give you a tremendous amount of loft and definition. It can be used for embroidery in the hoop, either by hand or machine, and it can be wonderful for any kind of project where you want the high loft. Definitely. Right. Wow. That was, uh, that, that was a lot. There's so many things you can do with it. You know, it's yeah. just, I mean, it's stuff that I know, I know the batting very well, but seeing at it from another perspective and seeing what, o what other people have come up with gives me some really good idea. I might not come to work tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. ideas. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, we were just sitting there just looking every time we're going, that's why we weren't talking much. You were doing such a great job with the presentation and we were like, you can do that. You can do that. Like we had ourselves muted so we could talk about like how awesome the stuff is. <laughs> We're like, that's really cool. I didn't know you could do that. And um, then um, a shout out to some of the um, the uh, pillow forms with the polished cotton covers oh, that yeah. you do. This was one with it being that polished cotton. We did a video on how we did use the uh, quilting stencil to paint um, onto the pillow and use some glitter um, paint in there as well. And it came up with a really cute design. Um, these, awesome. these pillow forms are absolutely amazing. I love them. I have them all over my house. Here's some of the pillows that reside at my home. Um, <laughs> but they have great definition. Like she was saying, they don't flatten out and they're amazing for uh, the couch, for the sitting room, for yep. you know, the guest bedroom, anything like that. Just because it has all that extra stuff. 
Yeah, I made a bunch of them and put them on my couch, the bigger 20 by 20 ones. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, super cool. Awesome. That that one that you did the painting on, do you have that posted anywhere? Um, it's no, uh, we no, we don't. I'll put it on Instagram. I'll tag you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see it. So one of the projects that I made, I, I made a list of all the things we were going to make for holidays. So I've got two different presentations, one that's on like um, gift items for the holidays and the other on home decor. And you guys got to see the holiday home decor version added into the regular lecture. Um, and I totaled up 118 different project ideas wow. made with with our products. So I will be sharing those throughout the season on Instagram. So if people want to follow us and I can tag you guys as well. So, so that people could see where to get those um, different products. Um, but this was a project that I made. This is a um, my, it's for my grandson. He is really into any kind of um, moving structural vehicle, right? <laughs> so like buses and, and uh, cement mixers and caterpillars and all that kind of thing. He's really into that. And so I made this little pillow for him and it has a pocket in the front and in there is a book called Dig It. Um, and it's, so it's the same theme. And then it has a matching blanket. Oh, cool. That is made with like kind of like a minky cover um, with a fleece on the back, um, which, you know, those no sew blankets, those are absolutely the way to go because this was a nightmare to sew. <laughs> <laughs> I got it all squared up and pinned. And then every time I'd get three sides pinned, the fourth side would be off. <laughs> and I pinned it and repinned it like four times. And I thought, why did I not just tie this thing? <laughs> um, so there's a little tip if you're going to be making blankets for Christmas. Um, but, you know, this kind of a little pillow is a fantastic gift. And, and again, you know, you can make a cover. This one, I actually hand stitch the top shut. So I did the three sides and then hand stitch it shut. Um, he's a rough and tough little boy. And I thought if there's a way to get the pillow cover off, he's going to have it off in two minutes and he's going to, he's going to wreck it. So, <laughs> so I stitched it on so he can't take it off. But the great thing is you take the book out, throw the whole thing in the wash and it'll wash beautifully. That awesome. is awesome. awesome. I absolutely love that. Um, real quick, two seconds. Um, you talked about showing the the BY products mm -hmm. um, real quick just to show their difference in loft. Yeah. There. So let me show you an example. So this is what a label will look like. Just so uh, hopefully you can, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the how the numbering system works. Mm -hmm. So this is a 448 or um, 996, right? So let me take one of these out and you can see the thickness of this, right? Now, if I go up to something like an 848, which should basically be twice as thick, it is twice as thick, right? So there's a big difference. You'll also notice this has got some structure to it. So again, if you're doing any kind of upholstery project, or maybe you want to create some extra puff with your pillows, you can get your pillow form. Let's say that your case is going to be 16 by 16. Get your pillow form 14 by 14 and put a couple layers of this in there. Again, that's going to give additional loft and structure but you can also use these when you're doing embroidery in the hoop on a machine. So if you're creating something or even something like the dream big panels and your goal is to have a ton of dimension, these kinds of products can be used for that. Just like the other batting products, the thickest one um, that I've got here. Oh, here's the upholstery wrap too. Let me show you that one. Um, this one has got a lot of structure to it, right? And it, you could really, with most of these, you could stitch up to like 18 inches apart on them. Wow. They're super, super strong. I mean, again, these are used by upholsterers. So it's got to be something that they can pull and stretch over to do the upholstery and that they know is going to hold up really well. Gotcha. And then backtracking to the that eight, the 848, that, that's basically a 1696, right? A 16 out. Uh, let me see. Yes. Okay. Yes. Same thing. So, okay. Because it's 48 inches wide versus 96 inches so wide. So on, right? on the roll and, on our website, and, it's going to be a six, nine, yeah. 16, nine, six. Yeah. Okay. 
And the, the weight, again, is always based on the number of ounces per linear yard. Yeah. So it stands to reason that if you've got something twice as wide, right, that, that it's going to be two times. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay. Well, I thought oh, yeah, that, that was, was that was amazing. I, yeah. I, a lot of good things, a um, lot of good questions, a lot of good comments. People, uh, a lot of them were on the the silk too. People were amazed at what I was amazed on some of the things that silk can do. Yeah. Um, and some of the use cases for it, which are great. Yeah. No. Very good presentation. So. Thank you. And and just as a side, I know we're talking home decor tonight, but if anybody is making clothing, there's some really fun like quilt coat alongs going on on Instagram right now. Um, there's already been one. There's another one starting up. If you're looking for something for clothing, try the silk. Once you make your coat and you wash it one time, that silk will drape like nothing else. And you'll be able to wear it year round. It'll keep you almost as warm as down, but it'll never feel hot. So you'll be able to use it year round. And we have some really well-known people, people like Chris Vieira, who goes by Quilter on the Run 1. Um, she makes these very elaborate coats that kind of look steampunky or dusters. And she very elaborately stitches them and adorns them. Every one of her jackets and coats has that silk batting in it. Oh, so you could go you could go to her website or her, her feed and take a look at her work and just get an idea of what that silk does. We also have couture designers that use that. Uh, the silk for that same reason. And again, it'll be structured and somewhat stiff like raw silk before you wash your project. You do need to keep in mind when you're making clothing that silk shrink shrinks three to 5%. So make sure that when you're making, you know, your fabric and stuff, I would not pre-wash the fabrics. I would make the everything a little bit bigger. Let those things wash and shrink together and then cut your pieces out for your jacket. Oh, makes oh, sense. Good tips. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to have to watch this back just because I know. So, so, so much education, <laughs> so many great tips on this one. Yeah. Uh, well, Stephanie, we want to thank you so much for joining us this evening and taking time um, out of your evening to be with all of our viewers um, along with us. Yeah. And uh, this, we can never thank you enough. You, you're always so good to us. We appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we appreciate Well, thank you. You guys are awesome customers and great partners. And we always have fun, <laughs> even when our technology fails us. <laughs> we make it so, work. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for everything everybody for giving us a little bit of your time and uh, we can't wait to see what you make. Please tag us when you're sharing things made with our batting. We'd love to see what you create. Definitely. Yeah. I'll drop your Instagram um, in the, the description as well. So Stephanie, thank you so much for being with us and we will see you next time. All righty. Good night. Hey, see ya. Wow. I uh, Whoa. That was a lot. That, my brain. That's a lot of information, <laughs> but know, it's really, so good. Yeah, because we're really good at knowing everything about the quilting world, right. the quilts, what right. goes in the quilts, what makes it pop, what's all that. But all the information about the crafts right. and the home decor, that's just going to like take it to a whole new level. It's just amazing. I've got so many things to do. Oh, we're going to have to watch it. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it back so I can see what I can do. <laughs> but there's so many great things that can be done. And I, we hope that you all enjoyed it as well. Um, we just, I'm at a loss for work. There's so, yeah. I, my mind is going crazy on what I can do. I know, right? <laughs> That's awesome. We have kept you long enough, so we are going to let you go, but I hope you had some, got some great information also and in that, um, share with your friends, your culture friends, your guilds, you know, if they want to know a lot about the batting or how, what to do. Share the video. Let them watch the video. They'll just learn so much. Definitely. And don't forget yeah. to follow Hobbs on Instagram at Hobbs Batting. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you to tag them if you ever post it or if you ever create anything with their batting. Stephanie loves to see that. And maybe one of your items will be featured in one of her presentations. Exactly. And if you need any of these products, we have it on our website, longarmsupplies.net. There he's yeah, like, I wasn't I'm, I'm ready for that. Work. I wasn't ready for that one yet. <laughs> um, shop now at longarmsupplies.net. And we will see you all tomorrow morning. Yes. At, at, wow. Back again. I know. Uh, tomorrow morning at 830 a.m. Central Standard Time for Good Morning LEQ. Y'all yep. have a wonderful evening. Good night.